We're heading into another intense week of severe weather ahead with more concerning storms coming. The model trends that I'm seeing right now are looking fairly significant as we're going to see impacts with severe weather from the plains all the way to the east coast from Monday to Friday. I've got the details on those storms and the entire weather pattern ahead right here. So stick around. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join me. As always, check out the weather bell link below. It's for the model maps that I use, and you can get a free trial to it right there in the description. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications by hitting the bell icon. If you're new to my channel and enjoy my content and want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts in the future. Now, here we go. Taking a look at the future radar from the European model here, our trusty model for our pattern overview. Looking at what we've got going on the rest of this weekend here as we head towards our Sunday, May 5th of 2024. Looking at scattered showers and storms, especially down there in the parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Some of those could be severe. We'll also be watching some flooding as we go throughout the day Sunday in those regions. Meanwhile, along the East Coast, a system wrapping on up, not much severe weather there, but we'll also be watching the system, meanwhile, back on over here into parts of the Mountain West with some showers, as well as some snow showers, even into the higher elevations of Oregon, um, Nevada, and then, of course, the rainfall surrounding that. That system, as it moves out into the plains, as we head into our Monday, May 6th time frame, that's going to bring this surface low out over parts of Montana, moving on up there over the Dakotas as well, late Monday afternoon. And it's going to develop a southerly wind coming from the south to the north over parts of the plains. That's going to initiate likely a late evening severe weather threat beginning over parts of Nebraska and Kansas late Monday and continuing eastward from there along this boundary here. We could even see some stronger storms as far north as Minnesota, but you can really see how this line is going to go as far south as Texas. So if we get any storm development late Monday and into early Tuesday here into parts of south central Oklahoma and north central Texas, it could certainly be severe. That's something we'll track. Nonetheless, the upper level piece of energy with that storm it stays back towards montana but you can see how a new surface low is likely over parts of the great lakes that just means we'll have a new warm front and a cold front really to spark off severe storms late tuesday may 7th going into early wednesday may 8th we'll be tracking more storms then from southern michigan and parts of ohio back as far um, towards the southwest as northeast texas again if storms can initiate there we'll see a very similar scenario play out once again here as we go towards wednesday may 8th in the afternoon here and into the late evening hours as well it's a little uncertain exactly where storms will be located, but you can count on pretty scattered to even widespread activity of severe thunderstorms likely over at least Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, as far back towards the southwest as parts of Texas and Louisiana. So another day with widespread severe weather potential, and we might not even be done then as more storms as this front progresses towards the southeast. They're looking likely, some of them possibly severe, from at least Texas and parts of Louisiana curling through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, maybe even towards the Mid-Atlantic. So we are going to have a very active week in many zones and of course areas from Texas through the Midwest and in the Ohio Valley especially where we've got this energy continually wrapping back around and moving out of the North Central Plains. That's where we'll see the target areas for not only severe weather on multiple occasions but also of course flooding. Still some broad areas of at least some moderate rainfall around as we head towards our Friday May 10th here in the Midwest parts of the Northeast, the Southeastern United States. This is as that upper level piece of energy that will have been sitting around the North Central Plains all week will finally come crashing down bringing some cooler air. Now let's break down all the ingredients for severe weather that we're going to deal with as we head through this week. Starting on Monday, looking at the mid-level jet stream, 500 millibars in the atmosphere. This is about 15 to 20,000 feet above your heads. Notice how the trough moving um, west to east here out of parts of Nevada, Utah, um, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico takes on this vertical curve as it makes its way on out over parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Think of this negatively tilted trough, this is what it's called, as a big signal for severe weather likely in those zones I just mentioned there from really North Texas all the way up to South Dakota and even the western parts of Iowa, Missouri, and Arkansas. This is really where we're going to be watching severe weather Monday. But as that upper level piece of energy moves up here into the north central plains as we head towards late Tuesday, underneath it we're going to have this consistent mid-level flow, a fairly decent strip of stronger jet stream winds here from New Mexico all the way to Illinois. Out ahead of it, that's where we're going to have all that moisture moving from parts of Texas on up towards the Midwest, and therefore that's where we're going to be watching severe weather threats not only late Tuesday like we're looking at here with this jet stream piece of energy, but look at how that lasts even as we head towards late Wednesday, going into Wednesday night, early Thursday, this mid-level jet stream is still going strong over this region, meaning that we're going to likely see the continued severe weather threat and potential for some flooding over a lot of these regions, moving out of the deep south and the southern plains 
all the way on over there through parts of the Ohio Valley region. So something we'll be watching closely. Then that piece of energy finally begins sinking southward, bringing cool air behind it at the end of the week. But that's not before bringing additional severe weather along the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, um, those regions as we had probably late Thursday and then going into Friday. So that's the upper level setup with this system. But let's talk a little bit closer to the surface here with these dew points. This is your moisture content. Once you get above 55, you're getting into decent severe weather potential. Above 65, you are really robust if you can get all the other ingredients to line on up. And look at this. Any of these colors here, especially through Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, really indicating 62 plus for those dew points late Monday afternoon on our May 6th here. That's going to support that Monday threat from North Texas all the way up there to South Dakota, where at least modest dew points will be available. That is just your moisture. That's what dew points are really signifying here on the map. Here we go towards Tuesday. You can really see where that warm sector is. That's where you've got all of that moisture in place. 60s for dew points going as far northeast as parts of Ohio, um, but really rich moisture if we can get any storms to form down there in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. That's why that will be a really important area to watch day by day, even if the, you know, the systems aren't as close to that area as they are to the northern zones. We're certainly going to be seeing a lot more of the ingredients, the daytime heating ramp on up there. The same goes as we go towards late Wednesday here. We'll be watching the severe threat over a lot of the same areas, including Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, back on down there towards northeast Texas if the storms can form. Eventually, we begin to see this front crash down. You can see that really occurring as we go through Thursday. So it's going to be south of this boundary where the storms are likely Thursday afternoon. Still hugging the Texas coastline there. A lot of eastern Texas, in fact, through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, on up there to Virginia, as I mentioned earlier in the video. The moisture lining up exactly where the European model was showing those precipitation areas as well for Thursday afternoon. One other thing, back to the jet stream. This is right above your heads here in the low levels of the atmosphere. These are your southerly winds with height. And as you can see, right above our heads, we've got the southerly wind pumping in the plains here late Monday. And you can see how that's going to probably support our rotation because we remember we've got the westerly winds in the upper level jet stream, southerly winds with the lower level jet stream. And the combination of those two will create rotation Monday afternoon, late Tuesday going into Tuesday night here over those areas from parts of Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up to Ohio. Here we go again late Wednesday. Look at this Wednesday at 11 p.m. Likely a local max in some of those lower level winds here in at least the 40 to 50 knot range, especially on up there closer to the Ohio River where some of the gui guidance not only from models but also machine learning is showing where we could really see some intense severe weather there. And then here we go towards the end of the week, we'll still be watching some severe threats in other zones of the southeast as that low-level jet really continues to be strong. Now, here's my ONW severe scale. We're going to give you a look at where I think the highest risk zones of severe weather are day by day using this. If you're in a 1 or a 2 for severe weather, I don't want you to rule the threats out. At least isolated wind and hail-driven threats are likely. Once you get to a 3, an increased risk for severe storms with all hazards being likely. That's what I've got for my 3 of 7 on the scale. For a 4 of 7, scattered severe storms and some significant significant storms are expected. Five, six, seven, you're getting on up there towards outbreak territory. And yeah, I've got um, the potential for Monday, May 6th already here at a four of seven over parts of Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Severe weather appearing likely late Monday and Monday night over especially the Central Plain states. Favorable moisture, daytime heating, and jet streaming gradients should overlap best from eastern Nebraska to northeast Oklahoma, where a level four of seven has been issued. We'll probably see an upgrade to five of seven for a, you know, a potential outbreak here as we get closer. Still though, just a broad area with at least a 3 to a 4 of 7 there over the Central Plains moving towards the Mississippi Valley. Here we go towards our Tuesday. I think the highest potential from severe weather and another round of significant storms appears likely from northeast Texas to the Ohio Valley. While robust storms with all hazards are really possible from northeast Texas to Ohio, as I mentioned, the highest level threat appears to be in this level 4 of 7 zone, where again, we could see upgrades in all of these zones, but especially here. Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, I want you to be on high alert. I've got you already in a level 4 of 7 threat. Um, on the ONW severe scale for significant severe storms Tuesday, May 7th, going into early um, Wednesday as well. Here we go towards Wednesday in the afternoon and evening as well as Wednesday night. This is your May 8th. Concerning signs also present here 
While although those exact threats and regions for localized hazards remain uncertain, a broad 4 of 7 risk, the biggest one I've shown you yet, is in place on my own W Severe skill that I've created here from eastern Oklahoma to southwestern Ohio late Wednesday, as at least a couple of rounds of severe weather appear likely, at least from what's left over from Tuesday night, as well as what's going on late Wednesday. We could certainly see multiple rounds of storms over this region. That's why I've got that risk zone highlighted there. Increased moisture during the afternoon will support the threat. And then notice how I've got a 2 to 3 of 7 on the scale pushing towards the Gulf Coast and southeast, as well as mid-Atlantic regions of the United States. As I mentioned here, that's where the threats will be Thursday, May 9th of 2020. 24. Again, we'll probably get upgrades on all of these days as we get closer in some localized zones. We'll figure that out. And of course, subscribe to the channel to see when I post those updates. Now, here we go. Sunday, May 5th of 2024. Look at your temperatures. Let's do some temperature tracking. All of these zones I've got circled. We're looking at plenty of 60s and 70s, but we're going to see a lot of 80s, mid 80s at that over some of these zones that I'm circling here for later in the day. So from Southeast Texas, all the way to Tennessee, back down to Florida, very hot temperatures, some 90s even in Florida as we go towards Sunday and Monday. I want you to notice how far north 70s are going as we start the week here, and severe weather is going to kick off late Monday. And notice how we're going to have 70s move through the severe weather region there in the Central Plains, as far north as the Midwest and the Northeast in those zones I was circling. Then south of these lines here that I'm drawing on screen, that's where we've got 80s Monday afternoon. And again, the continued 80s and 90s that we're going to see in Texas this week, that's why I think the moisture, the instability, all of that is going to be really off the charts, and that's why we've got a closely track the severe potential there whenever we can get storms to fire on up. Here we go, Tuesday, May 7th. Look at this zone where we'll be watching the severe weather. Plenty of 80s to go around there, especially the further southwest you go. South of this line here, Tuesday afternoon, getting into the upper 80s, nearing 90. And that goes towards places like Atlanta, Georgia, central Alabama, northern Louisiana, and the Shreveport region. And we're going to continue to see that Wednesday only build up. 81 degree readings there through parts of Illinois. Lots of temperatures in the mid 80s here, even into parts of the Ohio Valley. And notice those boxed temperatures there in parts of Mississippi, uh, Alabama, and even towards Georgia, we'll potentially see some of those record highs. That's what those boxes indicate for Wednesday afternoon. And all of those gray colors there over from Texas all the way to the eastern coast of the United States, and in particular in the Carolinas, that's where we're seeing upper 80s and low 90s. That continues Thursday, but notice how it's a little tamer below that front line there. Meanwhile, back to the north of that, we're seeing some cooling temperatures, some comfortable mid-70s here over a lot of the Midwest, some 50s and 60s for highs over the far north central plains, and the same is going to go for Friday. We're going to be watching a lot of 50s and 60s with a little bit of a cool front moving southeastward across the plains. I don't think this is a need to panic for frost and freeze concerns in the nighttime. I'll let you know if that does increase, but I think there's a lot of people saying that we're going to have a big frost and freeze. I don't know if this is going to do quite that. Again, though, we'll track that as we get closer here. Notice by Friday, May 10th of 2024. A lot of the warmth being confined to the Gulf Coast as this cool down here that the Climate Prediction Center is issuing in their outlook for May 10th through May 14th. That cool down is going to be moving towards the south and east and especially prominent from Texas on up there to Indiana and Ohio by the mid-month time frame here. And the good news, that's going to continue to kind of linger around shift southeastward as we head through the middle time frames of the month. And I think that's really going to help to keep severe weather a little tamer once we get beyond this weekend weekend. You can see Tuesday, May 7th of 2024, we've got the cool cooler air of at least 5, 10, 15 degrees below average being indicated by our ensemble collection here back towards the northwestern United States. By the time we head towards Saturday, May 11th, look at how the cooler air, at least 5, 10 degree departures from average, those are really going to be filling on in along with drier air here. I think that's the big point. Drier air, less severe weather potential over the central United States, the Midwest, even towards the East Coast as we had really as early as this upcoming weekend. So once we get past Friday, in fact, even earlier than that, the further northwest you go, we're going to be eliminating the severe threats. Look at this, 10, 15 to 20 degree below average departures in some spots in the east, and that could locally produce frost and freeze concerns, especially in the northeastern part of that zone as we head towards the end of the upcoming weekend and even in towards the May 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th time frame. All right, we've talked about everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Hit that subscribe button if you want more updates just like this that are 10 to 15 minutes long. Always check weather.gov for your latest information from the National Weather Service. That's all I got. Have a good day, everyone.